Hello everybody, I'm Emily Larlam, aka Kikopop on YouTube, and this video is on the topic of public access training for service dog teams. Now, I was asked to make a video on this topic by my Kikopop members, but as I've been creating this video, I've realized that it needs to be a series, so there will be multiple videos on this topic because I just keep collecting more and more ideas, tips, and footage. Um, I'm also going to have other presenters who are experts at training service dogs present their tips on this topic. Now, something that's really important to mention is that in no way do these videos condone training fake service dogs to bring to places that dogs are not allowed by law. This video is about helping service dog teams so they can train their dog to be calm, confident, reliable, and safe when out and about in public spaces where most dogs are not allowed. Now, the wonderful thing about this video is that everybody can use this video to train their dog and it's going to be highly beneficial because what you're creating is a dog that's calm, confident, reliable, and safe in public spaces. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to bring your dog somewhere that dogs are not allowed. So there are lots of wonderful places to go with your dog and these videos will help you train your dog to be really well behaved like a service dog when out and about in public. The first two tips are one, teaching your dog to say hello to someone as a learned behavior that's on a cue and also has a release cue to end the behavior. And the second tip is about teaching your dog to feel calm and confident when someone unexpectedly reaches and touches them or suddenly leans over them. Um, because even though we don't want that to happen out and about in public and we can try to protect our dog as much as possible, at some point it might happen. And if your dog hasn't had any training of it happening in comfortable situations, it can actually cause your dog to be hypervigilant or worried that someone's going to reach and touch them depending on the dog. So some people might have a really happy-go-lucky lab that, you know, a brick could fall off of a wall and drop on their back and they wouldn't even notice. But for other dogs that are more sensitive, um, this exercise is a great idea to work on with those dogs. Now, before I get into the two tips, I want to mention that before you start training this, one, you need to have a trusting relationship with your dog uh, before you do this, and you need to work on handling and grooming exercises where your dog is calm and confident and, and feeling a, a positive emotional response when you touch your dog. So if you can't even touch your own dog, um, then it's a, a good idea to not even work with other people first. So you want to work on your own, conditioning your dog to love being handled and groomed, or at least accept it and find a, and be anticipating something good to follow that. So I'll link a video in the description below on how to start conditioning, handling, and grooming to create a positive emotional response in the dog, as well as for them to ignore it and remain calm and happy while it's going on. Now, uh, it's extremely important in my training to break the steps up small enough so the dog is successful every step of the way and feeling calm and confident so that you're not having uh, errors or situations where the dog suddenly feels uncomfortable and thinks, ooh, I don't know if I like that. I, I never want that to happen again. So uh, with both of these exercises, I suggest that first you have success with doing the exercises with your dog. So you practice saying hello to your dog in the ways that strangers do, the weird ways. And then you practice uh, touching your dog unexpectedly in training sessions in a way that they feel comfortable at first. And then you move on to your uh, people that your dog trusts, so close friends and family members. And then when your dog is successful with them, you can start working with friends that your dog doesn't know so much, as well as new people that you have asked for help or perhaps other trainers or friends um, that you've just met so that uh, the dog is meeting a new person, but it's a controlled environment. That's how I would set, uh, set it up for um, a client or even myself when trying to make sure that there are no errors and this dog is going to have um, a reliable behavior as well as a reliable emotional response when these things happen out and about. 
Some of you might never want your dog to say hello to another person. And if you don't have a service dog and just a pet dog that just doesn't like meeting strangers, your dog never has to meet strangers. And so instead of working on the exercise where your dog says hello, which is very beneficial to train anyway for when friends and family visit your house and you want your dog to interact, you can use that exercise for that. But I suggest if you're never gonna have your dog say hello to people in public, that you work on how you tell the person, sorry, uh, you can't pet my dog. Because what can happen is if you haven't worked on it, uh, it depends on your personality, but I have social anxiety. So if someone were to ask that and I say no, I start to get all stressed. And sometimes dogs can pick that up as well as you do, different behavior when people approach. So if you a person approaches and you suddenly uh, speed up and go the other way without even talking to them, uh, that can be that can make dogs start to be suspicious about about that person because your behavior suddenly changes. So um, instead of doing the greeting, you can practice having friends and family members that the dog is really close to coming over and saying, oh, what a beautiful dog, can I pet him? And you can practice saying, oh, sorry, we're training, or not today, or whatever you want to say, you know, oh, he doesn't really like being petted, he's more of a treat guy, sorry, uh, we're in a rush, and then you just turn and walk away, and then you click and treat or mark and reinforce your dog multiple times after that scenario so that the dog starts to see this uh, picture of, oh, when that happens, it's just this training game that's fun and normal people do it, not just strangers. This is something my, the, the person I trust does. This is something that her friends and family do. It's a normal behavior rather than something that just uh, creepy strangers do in the park. There are many ways to teach your dog to say hello on a verbal cue. This example is teaching your dog to go over to a person, stand calmly or sit calmly in front of them, let the person pet them, and then be released back to you or come back to you if they feel uncomfortable. Also, I'm gonna show that uh, you can ask your dog if they wanna go over, and if they don't wanna go over, then you don't make them, so they can have a choice about going over there. So that's why my cue is, do you want to get petted? And then if the dog goes over and doesn't want to, then you can mark and reinforce that choice as well. So some dogs might choose never to go over, and that's okay, and it's a great way to get out of a situation where someone asks, asks, hey, can I pet your dog? And I say, hey, do you want to get petted? And then the dog turns and goes the other way and you can say, oh, I'm sorry, he doesn't, you know, a lot of people have petted him, he doesn't want anymore. You could also have another cue that releases the dog to do whatever they want with a person or a dog, such as saying, go say hi to a person, means they can get excited and spin around circles and do crazy fun stuff together, or, Perhaps if you wanted uh, your dog to say hello to another dog, you could say, go say hi, and then, or go play, and then they could run around together and do whatever they want. Where the cue, do you want to get petted, is more a proofing game for the standing or sitting position where the dog is being reinforced for remaining calm and confident while another person touches the dog. So it's more about the human than the, dog, uh, the dog's enjoyment. But some dogs really do enjoy calmly sitting and being petted by strangers. So if at any point in your training the dog is getting overexcited, I would release the dog and my cue for uh, the dog to come back with me is let's go or free and then the dog is back with me. And if you're out and about in the future, you can just end the greeting and say, sorry, he's getting a little too excited now. See you later. And then go on your merry way and help your dog calm down from it. This is an extremely simple way of training the behavior. You need to teach your dog the cue to touch a hand, and I'll link a video on how to train that in the description below. And you need to teach your dog to be comfortable with petting. And as I said, the grooming and handling video is in the description below on how to do that. So you can work on warming up with just having your dog touch your hand, as well as being petted. And then you can have a helper, a close family member or friend that the dog trusts, and you're going to say, go touch. And, and point to the person's hand. And then if the dog doesn't know to touch a, another person's hand besides yours, they can say the cue touch or move their hand to encourage the dog 
to touch their hand. Now, if the dog really is confused because it's always been something you do yourself, you can rub a, a different smelling treat that's really smelly on their hand, and as the dog goes to sniff their hand, you can mark and reinforce. So the dog is going over and targeting the person's hand. Then what I like to do, um, actually a friend of mine, Joanna, started me on this process because it was a great way of getting the dog, because my dog is really focused on me, it was a great way of getting my dog to focus on her. So um, I would put the treat into her hand and then she would feed the dog a treat. So if you're uncomfortable with that or it's not part of your service dog training program to have other people feed your dog, you can just come over and feed the dog uh, in front of the person so they're facing the person. Otherwise, what's going to happen is the dog will go over and, and just want to come back to you because they like you more and they like the treats more. So um, you can have the person feed the dog a treat. So the dog goes over, touches the person's hand, and then you can give them a treat to feed the dog. Now, if, this, uh, if your dog takes treats hard, then I suggest you just feeding your dog than doing this. Um, behavior because the dog could take the treat excitedly if they're excited to see the person. So at first when you begin this training it's a good idea to do it when uh, whoever it is that's helping you has been over for a while and your dog is really calm in their presence before working on this. So once the dog is touching the person's hand reliably uh, from being sent out from you uh, then you can start to add the cue do you want to get petted? So you say to your dog, do you want to get petted? And then add the cue touch. And then the dog goes over and touches the hand and gets multiple treats. And then you can release the dog by saying let's go or free or whatever release means to come back to you. Or perhaps you say uh, get into the heel position to your dog. Uh, my cue is close. So that, that means come real close. But you can still look everywhere. Um, so whatever cue you want to mean, uh, get, move away from the person. And then you're going to mark and reinforce the dog for coming away from them as well. Because at some point, maybe the dog will enjoy the presence of the person. It's a novelty. And then they won't come back to you. So it's an important thing to work on uh, the release from that behavior as well. It's as important as asking the dog if they want to go over there. Now, if your dog goes over there and then decides not, and come, decides not to go over there and comes back to you, I would mark and reinforce that and say something like, oh, no, you don't want to go over there? And then I would turn and walk the other way. So the dog has a little bit of history of they don't have to go over there because there's some dogs, uh, <laughs> mine especially, that they'll do things even though they don't want to because I've asked them to do it and it's been so reinforcing that they might go over and touch something uh, that they're not, that they don't want to touch. So uh, I really like to build in that choice and that's a part in this training that other trainers might be like, oh no, I don't know about this, but it's just a greeting behavior. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I really like it because the dog can say no if they are like, eh, I don't want to do that. And I know that there are two behaviors that have been reinforced. One is touching the person's hand, the other one is turning and going the other way. Which one will I pick with this person? And that way you get a dog that can make choices and not put themselves in a position where they then are like, ooh, I don't like this very much. The next step is saying, do you want to get petted? And I like to point at the person that I want the dog to get petted by and then marking and reinforcing for the dog going towards the person and then feeding the dog for stationing in front of the person in a sit or a stand or whatever they're comfortable with. And the dog doesn't necessarily have to touch the person's hand anymore. They can just stay there and the person can just keep their hands to their side at first. And then when that behavior is reliable, you can then add the petting. So you say, do you want to get petted? The dog goes over to the person. You could, if you're still in the training process, you can reinforce multiple treats for the dog standing there. And then as the person reaches with a hand, you're going to mark as the person touches the dog. So if you don't have a clicker uh, because you're, uh, you don't use a clicker or you're busy using your hands for something else. Um, you can use a verbal marker like good or yes, or you can click and then feed the dog. And I still like to feed the dog in the direction they're facing towards the person. So the person's thinking they're getting a sincere <laughs> greeting from the dog. So the dog comes over, mark and reinforce. Uh, the moment the person pets the dog, and then if the dog's doing really well, you can, have, you can delay when you mark. So the person puts their hand on, moves them around, pets, and then mark and reinforce. 
and then multiple pets where they reach, pet, stop, reach, pet, stop, and then reinforce, and then call your dog away. Now, if it's stressing your dog out, I suggest stopping the training and then making the steps smaller because the point is to have a calm, confident dog that's having a positive experience during this, not a dog that's stressing out and feeling conflicted about, oh, I really wanna say hi to this person, or oh, I really feel nervous or weirded out by this. Um, so you wanna make sure uh, that your dog's muscles are soft and relaxed and that they're not getting too overexcited by this behavior. Here I'm working with my own dog, Halo, and my brother, who Halo trusts completely. And at first, he's a little bit confused by the reinforcement delivery of the treat being in my brother's hand. He thought it was about standing up or sitting pretty, but he catches on quickly. All I do is wait till all of his four feet are on the floor before giving the treat. And you could lure the dog back into standing position or sitting position and then mark and reinforce the dog for keeping all his feet on the floor. If you're not comfortable with having someone else feed your dog, you can do what I'm doing here, where I'm reaching and feeding the dog with their head facing in the direction of the person that they're greeting. Halo, do you want to be petted? Go touch. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. Awesome. Halo, do you want to be petted? Go touch. Good boy. Good. Let's go. Halo, do you want to be petted? Good boy. Good. Good boy. Let's go. So he's sitting here, and you're just going to reach and, and pet his heady. Good. And again. Good. And now with him facing forward like that. Good boy. Now pet him with both hands on both sides of his head. Good. And under the chin and the left side of his face. And just weird, random, different things. <laughs> Good. Let's go. Awesome. Halo, do you want to be petted? Good. Good. Halo, do you want to be petted? No? Okay. Good boy. Halo, do you want to be petted? Good boy. Halo, do you want to be petted? Good. Good. Let's go. Good boy. If you have a dog that's really focused on you and doesn't really want to interact with other people, you can use low value treats and give the person that's helping you higher value treats so it builds your dog's interest in wanting to work with them. If you have the opposite problem, you can have the helper have no treats at all, or you can give the helper low value treats and you use the extremely high value treats. Sometimes for some dogs, this really helps because it changes their motivation of wanting to go over. And when they go over and get a low value treat from the person, they're more likely to want to turn back to you and come back to you to work for your higher value treats than hang around with the person that they got released to say hi to. After working on these exercises with my friend Joanna in my yard and then at a park, we then met at a public place to work on the same exercises. We also practiced different scenarios of what a person might say when they ask to pet your dog, as well as what I would reply before then releasing Halo to say hello. And I also practiced saying no thank you, not today, and then using the cue let's go to move away. Halo, you want to get petty? Okay. 
if at any point your dog starts to look uncomfortable or over aroused, you can simply break up the steps and make it easier for the dog. This next tip is on teaching your dog the concept of surprise encounters, unexpected and unwanted attention from people, verbal, uh, visual, and tactile. So the person might make noises, they might say something to you. Uh, the thing that my personal dog Halo doesn't like is when people bark at him. Uh, so I still need to work on that because he finds it uh, aversive. Nobody wants to be stared at and bark, barked at. And I've actually worked with dogs so much that he could care less if a dog comes over and barks at him. But when a person barks, he's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So I need to work on that with him. Um, but other things that people do uh, are, are say, hey buddy, or mm, uh, or things like that, or try to get your dog's attention in different ways, wave their hands, uh, lean over and touch the dog so or pat the dog as you go by. So if we work on these concepts uh, with our dogs before strangers do it, it's extremely beneficial because your dog will be like, oh, that's what my mom does during training games. That's what uh, her friends and her family do. These weird things aren't weird. They're, they're cool and it means, oh, it's one of those training people uh, in the park. They're just proofing my service dog skills. It must be a setup, a training setup, rather than, whoa, this is so creepy, or whoa, this is so exciting. So if you had the dog that was uh, worried about it, it would be good for them. But also if you have a dog that gets overexcited about it uh, and wants to say hi, then it's good for those dogs too to learn that those distractions mean nothing that it's one of those proofing games about staying uh, relaxing and being touched. So um, again, for my dog Halo uh, and my other dog Splash, they didn't like when I would be not paying attention and someone would sneak up behind and try to touch them. Uh, that's just weird. So I like to proof this behavior in small approximations so the dog is never feeling stressed by it. So you begin by having someone pet your dog while they're watching the person and work on the grooming and handling exercises. You do it first and then progress to where the person walks by the dog from the front and touches the dog. And then when the dog is enjoying that game, you can practice the stuff in the video that I'm gonna show, which is uh, being touched unexpectedly while facing the other way, sitting, laying down, standing, and walking. I like to really proof this behavior so a dog is really confident where they're walking along and suddenly something touches them. It's not a threat or it's not something to get excited about or even worry about, and that it just sometimes happens when you're out and about. So that's the, the benefit of this exercise. Nice. Good boy. <laughs> and now stop petting him and then, and then go back to pet him. So there's like a gap in between. Good. Good job. Awesome. Good. Let's go. Here you can see Halo looks around when he's touched from behind when we're out and about. If this kept happening, what we could do is go back to the greeting where he's saying hi to the person or being touched from where he can see the person at first before moving on to this step. But here you can see that after a few times, after he's been touched, he doesn't need to look around anymore and he looks relaxed and calm and can easily ignore that distraction. Most dogs will look back again when you change the picture slightly. That's why these proofing games are so important to build reliable behaviors.
By playing these training games using positive reinforcement, it's going to greatly increase your dog's confidence as well as reduce your dog's stress when out and about. If the dog keeps looking at the helper every time the helper touches the dog, you can go back a step to where the dog can see the helper reaching for them and you can mark and reinforce your dog for looking at you or ignoring that movement first before then working on the person touching the dog from behind. If you think your dog keeps looking over because they're curious or they like the person, what you can do instead is do what I'm doing here in this footage where I'm not going to mark and reinforce anymore when the person touches the dog and wait till the dog doesn't look in order to mark and reinforce. Good job! This next tip is about teaching your dog to wait calmly before being cued to exit your vehicle, as well as wait calmly before being cued to enter the vehicle. And I also like to add to that to wait calmly with you, either by your side or in front of you, or maybe in a down stay as you do stuff, before you then move away from the vehicle. Because a lot of times what can happen is that um, when you get out of the vehicle, you move quickly to do something else. You either go into a store or you go for a walk, but you leave the vehicle. So getting out anticipates movement. And when that happens, what can happen is the dog can start to want to pull somewhere that they know that they're going into a store or to uh, get to be released to go to the bathroom somewhere. So uh, you're working on teaching the dog to stay with you. You can work on this behavior at home, in an enclosed, fenced area, or in your house using a crate at first to teach the concept. At first, you can mark and reinforce your dog for waiting calmly as you open the door just a little bit. As your dog succeeds, you can open the door wider and wider and for longer durations before you mark and reinforce. When your dog is doing really well, you can add distractions like turning your back on the dog or looking distracted by something or walking away and coming back before then releasing your dog. Good boy. For getting into the vehicle, you can mark and reinforce your dog for waiting calmly as you touch the door, open the door a little bit and close it again, and then open the door all the way and mark and reinforce your dog for waiting until you give the cue to jump into the car. Now I'm going to talk about teaching your dog to wait calmly with you after you've released them from the vehicle before you then move on to do something else. So to begin with, you can release the dog from the vehicle and then mark and feed at a high rate of reinforcement. So treat, 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 mark and treat before the dog has a chance to do anything else. Then when the dog is doing really well, after you mark and feed, you have their attention and they're not drifting, you can add duration. So you mark and reinforce for the dog just standing and you might want to tidy it up. If you wanted the dog by your side, you could then have the dog by your side and mark and reinforce the dog or whatever position you want the dog in uh, when you're busy doing something before you leave uh, your vehicle. When working on teaching a dog to be calm and attentive after exiting a vehicle, I like to work on one specific game in general, which is the default stop when you stop game, which is that you mark and reinforce your dog for standing calmly at your side, you take a step, and as you take the step, you mark and then reinforce multiple times, and then slow down as to how many times you mark and reinforce for your dog standing next to you. So your dog is practicing and learning that you take a step and then stop. And then after you've practiced that a little bit, you can take a step and then stop and see if your dog stops in anticipation for the reinforcement. And then you can mark that and reinforce it. So you're practicing, you get out of the vehicle, you take a step and then stop. And then as your dog uh, gets better, you can do multiple steps where you take a step and then stop take a step and then stop, take a few steps, stop, do some direction changes, return to the vehicle, and it's a great game to play to get your dog into your relationship with you rather than just focusing on what they're gonna do next. Great. Here you can see, after I release Halo, I'm marking and reinforcing him multiple times for standing calmly on a loose leash with me before I start moving. Another game that I'm playing is taking one step forwards, marking and reinforcing for him stopping when I stop, 
as well as taking turns and marking and reinforcing him for staying with me, as well as backing up with him and marking and reinforcing him for taking a step backwards with me. If your dog has the habit of rushing ahead of you when you stop, you can use a barrier such as a wall in your house or a coffee table to work on this exercise first before then practicing the exercise with the dog away from the wall. When you're training these behaviors and using a high rate of reinforcement, don't worry if your dog is looking up at you all the time. As you proceed and your dog gets better and better and you add duration, what you can do is make sure to mark when the dog's head is facing forwards naturally so that when you're walking around in a store or going somewhere, your dog doesn't have to stare straight up at you to do the behavior, but can walk naturally and take in the environment. The stop when you stop exercise is also great for teaching your dog to stay with you when going up and down stairs, rather than racing ahead. Good. Good. If your dog goes ahead of you, you can simply lure the dog back to the position at your side and then make criteria a little bit easier for your dog. Good. Good. Awesome. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful for your training needs. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kikopup by clicking the join button. See you later.